Uh, thanks, Roger, and thanks to the OCCA, and most importantly, thanks to you all for being here tonight on a uh, Sunday night. That's amazing. Um, and um, so I'm Dave Min. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a law professor at UC Irvine. Uh, I'm most importantly a father of three young children. Uh, they're all about to turn two, five, and seven, so you can tell what happens about nine months before then. Um, so as many of you know and have heard me say before, I'm uh, running on a dad agenda. Uh, it's about paying it forward, investing in the future, investing massively in the types of long-term priorities that will restore the foundations of the American dream, create that opportunity for children, future generations going forward, and of course, climate change is the most important issue I can possibly imagine at this time when we think about future generations. Now, many of you know that I've been pretty consistent in saying this across the board. I'm not just coming here talking to you about climate change. It's something that I hit in every campaign stop out there. Uh, you know, I grew up in California. I was an Eagle Scout growing up. I remember, um, well, I wasn't, I guess you have to work towards it. I was a Boy Scout, became an Eagle Scout. And I remember that was my first real interaction with the great outdoors. Uh, I want to make sure we preserve that sense of awe that I had as a boy uh, at the great uh, wilderness that we have in California that we're fortunate enough to have, uh, and also to avoid many of the problems that we see coming down the line. Now, we know the problem in this room. Uh, the concentration of CO2 in our atmosphere has risen tremendously in our lifetimes, uh, and the global average temperature, of course, has increased as a result as well. Uh, we also know in this room that without major policy reforms, we're facing radical changes to our climate that potentially threaten our civilization. Uh, areas that are now habitable may no longer be in our lifetimes or children's lifetimes. Our global food and water supply may come under threat. We may actually see wars over these commodities that we consider basic human rights in the not-so-distant future. Uh, and we know that violent weather patterns will continue to tax our economy. We just saw that we lost 33,000 jobs in September due to the hurricanes that we saw. Uh, Puerto Rico and much of the Caribbean is facing an epic rebuilding project that's going to cost many billions of dollars. Uh, these are the types of costs that our economy is going to incur on a regular basis due to these violent weather patterns. So what's the solution here? I, I think you, know, you all know the problem. You're familiar with that. Uh, first and foremost, we have to get back to science-based policy. Right? I think everyone in this room agrees on that. Uh, and so I'm happy to report that we have a number of top scientific experts, environmental scientists, uh, and policy experts supporting our campaign, uh, advising our campaign. Uh, but what should we actually do about it? First, I think we know we need to reduce our reliance on that 19th, 20th century technology of fossil fuels. Uh, and I think we have to have congressional legislation to do that. Now, I'm open. I know there's a kind of a debate between carbon tax, a cap and trade. I, I'm open to either solution. I think the key here is we have to get something quickly in place. I'm a pragmatist. I'll take whatever deal we can get because we have to turn things around quickly. Uh, we're facing an existential threat if we don't. Uh, we also need to coordinate with the rest of the world. Uh, Re-entering the Paris Accords is a good start, but it's not enough, clearly. That's a largely symbolic agreement. And if we, can't, we cannot solve this global problem without a truly global solution involving the EU, involving China, involving India. Uh, we have to work together. We also, by the way, need to increase innovation, uh, especially as to renewable energy and efficiency. Uh, this is obviously something that I think, as uh, Kevin mentioned, will create jobs. Um, California and United States did not become the top economies in the world by looking backwards. We became this by looking forwards towards innovation. Again, fossil fuels is a 20th century technology. We need to look forwards. Uh, we need to go away from the policies of Donald Trump uh, and Scott Pruitt that we're seeing right now. So what I'm proposing is an Apollo project for energy efficiency and reduced emissions. Uh, we, we decided in the 1960s that we would land a man on the moon. We did it within a decade because we devoted the resources to that. I propose that we do the same with respect to reducing our carbon emissions and our carbon footprint. And by the way, public investments in energy-related research today are far below what they were in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, that's unacceptable. What's also unacceptable is that Mimi Walters has accepted over $165,000 uh, from the oil and gas industry. I've pledged that I will not take a single dime from fossil fuel companies. Uh, and I will have a 100% rating from the LCV. Uh, Mimi Walters has a lifetime 3% rating from the LCV. Now, it's clear that climate change is a defining issue of our lifetimes. And I want to disagree uh, briefly with what Omar said. It, it, climate science is not a political issue. We all know climate change is real. At the same time, solving this is fundamentally a political problem. We know that there are actions we can take to reverse the alarming trends in CO2 that we're seeing today. The question is whether we can have the political will to do this. And that's why I want to thank my fellow candidates who showed up today. I think it's important to show up and illustrate your commitment to this cause. Uh, I know we're all very busy. Uh, I know we have lots of events going on. Some of us have jobs and families. Uh, but I think it's important to show your commitment to this particular issue. I think this is the most important issue of our times. Thank you very much.